Alright, welcome back. Uh, this week's video, I have four replays lined up for you, and three of those will have results. Because I know there are people out there who get really excited for results. So, back in the platoon, we got Bushy Church in his E100, and Rock Dude in his Object 704, and that is the last you are going to see of him. He's going the other way. And I am in my E100. The light of a tank that it is. And we're on uh, Kampanovka. I Sorry, Malinovka. And, uh... Well, we're gonna go do the heavy tank thing on the hill. Neither one of us, me or Bushy Church, carry heat in our tanks. Uh, now, I do carry more armor-piercing than he does. He carries closer to... Uh, oh, I've been spotted. Amazing! Gigantic hump of steel gets spotted on a battlefield. Fascinating. Yes, he carries something like 30 rounds of armor piercing and 20 rounds of high explosive, whereas I carry 5 rounds of high explosive and 45 rounds of armor piercing. Uh, I just find armor piercing to be more reliable. I keep the, the high explosive around more for situations like facing down an E3. I have, uh, I'm having a hell of a time with it. I'm going to throw a high explosive in his face and, and screw up his gun and maybe his gunner or commander or something. Or for when I need to reset a base. Those situations don't occur in this game, and I fired nothing but armor piercing in this match. Let's see here. We got a Fosh over there. That, oh, okay, nice shot. You could argue that if I'd fired heat there, it might have done damage. Of course, it might have bounced as well. However, you don't need to fire heat. You're, we're going to see I did a lot of damage in this game without firing heat. It's nice. Three. 752 damage. Now, I did take a big hit there. Based on the sound it made when it connected with my face, it sounded like heat. And I know there's a lot of tanks, a lot of players that see heavy armor and think, right, load the gold. And people would think that about an E4. If I just put armor piercing shot through, 791 damage. I don't think that way. I don't see armor and think, load, load, the, load the heat, load the gold. I see armor and think, okay, where are the weak spots? Because, well, because of a number of reasons. Part, part, part of which is my personality. I don't like spending a lot of money. Ooh, another shot in the E4 for 794 damage. Two very nice rolls. Very nice rolls. That's bound to come back to bite me in the ass. But, uh, yeah, let's get back into uh, premium ammo. When I started playing, it was gold ammo. It's all there is to it. That just sucks. Yeah, gold ammo. You could only buy it with gold. You could not buy it with uh, credits, like you can now. And so, I didn't have premium rounds. I didn't have gold rounds in anything, ever, because I wasn't going to spend money on it. Uh, since then, I've spent a lot of money on the game. But that's neither here nor there. Um, and the first tank tree I went up was the Germans. And the Germans had armor, but they also had guns that didn't necessarily have huge penetration. So, as soon as I started trying to learn how to get better and getting better, I had to learn weak spots for pretty much every tank in the game. And one of the things I look up when a patch comes out is the armor profile and the armor layout of the new tanks. And I've just noticed the e T-30, and I managed to take the shot on the nose. Uh, worked very well there. So yeah, I look up armor layouts, armor preferences, weak spots on tanks and I get familiar with them so that I don't have to worry about it like this E4 here I know that the commander's hatch or machine gun turret isn't nearly as well armored as the rest of it and after a while you just learn the general habits of where weak spots are you know, the lower plate is going to be a weak spot on most tanks. Commander's hatches, you know, machine gun ports, these things are going to... Ah, oh, yeah. I like that. These things are going to generally be areas where the armor isn't as good as what it says on paper. And, you know, you get used to looking for things like that uh, if you have to fight someone head-on. And then the rest of the time you try not to fight things head-on. Because why do you want to get shot? And, uh, yeah, we've won the game. Uh, we've lost two tanks. Uh, Bushy Church 
and a uh, 1375, or th sorry, 1390. I have no idea where he died. So, results. So yeah, obviously, heat isn't a requirement. And that's my opinion on premium, round, on premium rounds, is they're not necessary. Uh, and it, uh, I find my opinion of people who immediately reach for heat or APC or gold rounds, sorry, for premium rounds, when they see armor, my opinion of them automatically drops. All right, like, okay, so you're you're not going to be bothered with trying to actually deal with me properly. All right, like, I know it's a part of the game, and blah 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 blah, and there's so many arguments for it being there, and you're not using it, you're hurting yourself and your team. No, no, not necessarily. The two of us did around seven thousand damage together. Neither of us use gold ammo. Okay, well, look at the uh, medium platoon there. The, the M48 Patton and the, the Leopard 1. Uh, 4,000 4, damage for, for one of them, 4,000 and a half for the other. That's 8,500 damage, they did more. Uh, were they using premium ammunition? Good chance. Uh, could they have gotten that without it? Yes. So I'm, I'm sorry, but I cannot find a single argument for gold ammo that, that I can agree with. I, I just can't. I, I can't find them. They, as far as I'm concerned, premium ammo doesn't even need to be in the game. And if they were to take it out of the game, then there are some tanks that are, are more or less balanced around the premium ammo, that you could rebalance those guns so that they, don't, they didn't need it in the first place. And I'm sorry, but I just I can't find a good argument for, for premium ammo, which is why I don't run it on most of my tanks. Uh, I did run it in my uh, Elfkorang's Panzer, which I no longer have. Because I felt that its gun didn't have enough penetration for its tier. And for its roll. And getting rid of premium ammo, they could have just buffed the penetration on that gun enough to make it functional for its roll and, it, and its tier. In my opinion. So, currently, I don't think I actually have any tanks with premium ammo anymore. Uh, yeah, okay. Detailed results. 9 shots fired, 7 hit, 5 penetration. So 2 shots bounce. Uh, they might have bounced with heat anyways. So, saying that it was because of firing AP isn't necessarily true, because heat does bounce, or fail to penetrate, or gets eaten by tracks or spaced armor. It's not that reliable. And yes, it does bounce. Oh, if you hit something at 80 degrees, heat will bounce. Just straight up bounce. Not even just like get deflected or something, because lots of people say, oh, heat never bounces. Yeah, it can. Uh, yeah, look at this. 53,000 credits, 34,000 end result. Um, if I'd been firing heat that entire time, I would have made no money with a premium account. And here, firing uh, AP, even without a premium account, I would have made money. And the experience I earned was quite nice, since all of it goes straight to the crew. So, on to the next review. Alright, so, keeping with the theme of big tanks that are uh, often known or associated with gold ammo in one way or another, my mouse, which I don't drive often enough, and uh, Bushy Church is back in C100, and once again, Arc dude in his Optic 704 going the other way, so you are not going to see any more of him. That was it. That's all you're going to see. So, the mouse. When I started playing tanks, this was going to be the only tier 10 I was going to have. Uh, because it was the only tier 10 German tank. And I was only going to drive German tanks. Considering uh, how many British vi videos I've put up. The odd French video. You can see that I have not exactly kept true to that word. What I have done, however, is I did not leave the German tree until I had the mouse, Egg Panzer E100, the E50M, and the E100. I had, oh, and the uh, DW E100. I had those five tier 10s before touching any other trees. Uh, and I am working on the Leopard prototype, so I'm working my way up there. I am on the stir email, that line as well. So I will at some point have the entire German tree either researched or all the tier 10s might have to use some free experience to get some of the littler tanks because I don't feel like going back and grind some of them. And I'm now grinding through the British and French trees, with the exception of artillery, because I found the tier 5 artillery to be absolutely horrendous, and I hate them. At the same time, I might just be holding them to the wrong standard. Uh, when I was driving the tier 5 German artillery, it was not the grill, it was the Hummel, and it only went to tier 8, and the Hummel was beast because that was before the high explosive uh, ammo was rebalanced. So, 
Nice damage roll in the T54. Gonna get another shot on him? No, I'm not. Bounce a shot, so I've taken one of the tracks and I've bounced one. Oh, there's a damaging hit from a uh, big gun. Apparently that guy. And I just lost my track to an object before. Now I'm gonna get another shot on this guy. Oop, Potion Church just did. Uh, I will not get another shot on him. And someone's just blown up my house. I've bounced another shot. And you're gonna hear that a lot this game because armor. That's what this thing is. It's armor. Am I gonna get a shot on him? No. Okay. Well, I can't really just sit around here because artillery's got my number because when a mouse is in the field, uh, artillery focuses on the mouse. That's that's just how it works. I don't make rules. I just work here. So, bounce another shot, bounce another shot. That shot went through the tracks to actually damage me. I put another shot into this before, bounce another shot. <sighs> tracks back up, bounced another shot. That shot went through the tracks. I got eight by the tracks. Okay, okay, that one. Uh, that one damaged. That one. Oh, okay. That one didn't penetrate. That was artillery. And I've taken another one in the tracks. That one did damage. That one hurt. Okay. Bounce the turret out so the shots bounce and get something in front of me. Bounced another shot. Okay, now I've got something in front of me. I feel a little bit safer. Bounce another shot. Bounce another shot. Get another shot into that T-54. And bounce a shot from him at the same time. Bounce another shot from him. Bounce another shot from him. <laughs> and somewhere around, bounce another shot. Artillery. You can't hide from them forever. So. And uh, Rocker Dude's also dead. Uh, he just got destroyed by a uh, enemy object 704. So, there's that. <sighs> I hope you're interested in finding out exactly how much damage I could have taken. Or uh, how much damage it took to kill me. Because I plan on telling you about it when we get to the results. For now, I'm going to enjoy watching uh, Bushy Church take a bit of a beating. And uh, I still consider him to be a bit of a new player. He's up around... He's up over 6,000 battles now, I think. I think he's up... I know he's in between my brother and me with regards to number of battles. Um, but at the same time, he hasn't been playing for as long. And that's going to sound a little weird, but... Uh, my brother's battle count is kind of low because, um, well, not long after getting into World of Tanks, he started playing Minecraft a lot, and also there was issues of uh, server connection latency, you know, the ping, where our, our hometown is, is kind of shit. Uh, currently, he's in college, and I'm at university, so better internet there, so I imagine he's going to start playing a bit more. So his, his battle count will go up. Mine certainly did. I did not have a huge count before I left for school. And uh, since being in school, I played a lot more. Uh, again, though, I don't play a lot when I'm at home because the, the ping is uh, problematic. I've gotten used to, to playing with better ping. So, Whereas uh, when uh, Bushy Church here started playing, he got really into it and he's been playing it a lot since. But at the same time, my brother and I got really involved into the, the culture of World of Tanks and looking up things like how to get better and, and YouTubers like Jingles. And, uh. Whoa, that was kind of laggy there. Sorry about that. My computer is doing its best. It's, uh, as you can tell, not the most powerful. But it's, it's good enough for what I need. And so, yeah, we got really in involved in, in the tank culture, and we would spend time looking up tanks and researching researching them and figuring out how to play things. And he's gotten to that point now where he's starting to pay a bit more attention to how he performs and how to improve, and he doesn't blame the team anymore, which is something that I think everybody does at some point uh, with online gaming is, is start blaming the team when things go wrong and... He's, he's past that at this point. He, he recognizes that if he does poorly, it's his fault. 
Um, now being a team game, there is a limit to how much of a win or a loss can be contributed to one person. Fire! Put it out quickly! Oh, that sucks. The engine is smoking. The fire is out. But at the same time, you have to accept that it's not your team's fault. And, uh, yeah. This fight was not the team's fault. There were things that all of us, all three of us, done better to carry the team. And, uh... There are some things that are just really, really stupid. <sighs> Let's see. This guy. He's got two kills. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. Well, not entirely. He got those two kills sitting on top of the hill. Yep, sitting on top of this, this hill here. In a T-57 Heavy. And now base is captured. Not the team's fault. Not the team's fault. Not the team's fault. Just keep saying that. Not the team's fault. So, defeat. Base captured. But how did we do? Well, I put in five good shots. I did some spotting. I did some spotting. Uh, seems kind of weird to say. I got some assistance. I did some spotting. Some track damage or module of some sort. Let's see here. Uh, five shots fired, five hits, five penetrations. It's pretty good shooting. Uh, damage done, 2,538. Pretty good. Damage for more than 300 meters, 1,482. Pretty good. Uh, hits received, 24. Penetrations, 9, and we know that that's not true. Non-penetrations, 15. So, obviously some track eating shots are counted here. Damage block by armor, 7,060. 7,060. And I don't know if that includes shots that went into the tracks, because it seems to count them as penetration, so maybe it doesn't count them here. But uh, 7,060 plus my 3,000 health, it took them over 10,000 points of damage to kill me. And that's the way I look at it. I look at it as, as they had to spend 10,000 points of damage on me, as opposed to on the rest of my team. And that's how I look at That's how I look at driving these big heavy tanks, and that's how I look at say, yes, I did okay there. And I made 14,000 credits with premium, I would have lost uh, 2,500 credits or so. I made 450 experience, it is uh, it is what it is, but yeah, 10,000 exp experience, oh, that would be amazing. No, 10,000 damage uh, absorbed by my tank that could have otherwise been redirected elsewhere on the team. So that's how you look at, uh, well, tanking. I suppose. At least that's how I do it. Uh, one more game. One more game. Two more games. One more game with a replay. But it's not going to be the next one. It'll be the last one. I'll save it for last. So, uh, Hold on. Stay tuned. Alright, so last game with the platoon for this video. And there's Rock Dude in the SU-101. I push it here to Jag Tiger 88. And myself, my Jag Tiger 88. Uh, somewhere around here, we start talking about making a 101 sandwich. I'd like to tease him a little bit. So, yes, tier 9 game, but there's only one tier 9 on each team. So that means the tier 8s are actually very important. So, oi, you. Watch where you're driving. Yes. Uh, and I'm in a Yang Tiger 88, which is a tier 9 chassis, with tier 8 health and a tier 8 gun. But the chassis is important, and I'm going to use that armor. Oh, I'm going to use that armor. Much like uh, last, was it last week, I think? I put up a video with Matilda where I parked it up in here and just wrecked everyone. Much of the same for this video. Uh, I'm just going to sit here and unload on these guys. I've taken no damage so far. Uh, I was going to go for the tracks on him. Oh, I'm sorry. Decided otherwise. Now, aiming for the uh, commander skip holder on the Tiger 2, since I don't have the penetration to go straight to the front of the turret. And yeah, bouncing a couple of shots, but I'm in a good position. And, uh, you know what, I'm going to 
gonna shoot at you instead. How about that? There. You're, you're, you're stuck now. Probably fairly safe there as well, but, uh, okay. Let's do some more damage. Well, I'm going to point out my errors here. I completely tunnel visioned on this. I did not notice that, uh, They started firing at everybody else on my team. We didn't so, we lost oh, and then lost, lost the track because of this guy. And I am so focused on what's going on that I do not pay attention to this. I notice my driver die, and I'm I don't care. I'm I'm all down. What does that matter? This super pushing takes, it, takes full advantage of it that I'm not paying attention. In the meantime, I continue doing damage to the enemy team before I die. And, uh, somewhere around here, I realize I've been shot from the flank. Get some damage from this guy. I can't. Fantastic. There's you down there. Good. And then I die. No results from this game. Uh, I don't know why I didn't save them. Uh, maybe I didn't think the game was going to be that good. Or we were just in a hurry and I just jumped to the next tank or something. So no results for this game and I cannot remember because it's been a little while now. I cannot remember how I did this. And uh, yeah. Both of us dead here. Rock dude dead. Uh, and the team does not manage to maintain momentum. Uh, if I recall correctly, I do believe we lost this one. Moving on to better and happier places. Alright, so, ditch the platoon. Uh, this, this game takes place on a different day. Uh, and they weren't online. So, Matilda, again. Uh, first time this video, but uh, I do quite like it. It's everything I love in a tank. Lots of armor, fast firing, rapid, accurate, high penetration gun. And uh, at its tier, nearly invulnerable to enemy fire. Now, we're not at tier, we're in tier 5. There are plenty of tier 5 tanks that make this armor look uh, incompetent. However, still not utterly useless because it still has a fantastic rate of fire and the gun is punchy enough that I don't think there are any tier 5s that uh, can avoid being damaged by it, actually. I don't know. Are there any tier 5s that can avoid taking damage from this gun? I don't think so. Perhaps the AT-2, but at the same time, it has some rather obvious weak spots. This gun can very easily get to and through. Uh, the Churchill 1, with the upgraded turret? Nah, uh, I don't know. It's got a lot of weak spots as well. Uh, the, the lack of a gun mantle is one of them. So, yeah, it's still very useful, even at a tier 5 game. At tier 6, you have to take a back seat. You have to work from a distance. Whereas in tier 4, you should lead the charge. You should be expected to lead the charge, and you will enjoy leading the charge. In tier 5, you can sort of be a bit more flexible. You can you can either push forward, and uh, you will be able to handle yourself relatively well in that situation. Hello, Mr. M3. Uh, but at the same time, in a tier 5 game, if you hang back and play more of a support role, no one can really give you grief for it since you're tier 4. So, but you can see, even in tier 5 games, you're going to run into other tier 4s that you can then cause to evaporate. And uh, he's, he's burning quite nicely now. Give him a little while, we, we, we might have to stoke the flames. But, uh, there's a Hetzer I can't quite get a shot off at. And Hetzers are one of those tanks that can actually pose a serious risk to you. Uh, M3 leads can as well, but um, at the same time, gigantic weak spots. The entire M3 leaves weak spots, so you don't have to worry about it. Whereas the Hetzer actually has somewhat functional armor. Fun fact, the Hetzer was the first tank I ever managed to get a uh, Reaper award in. Hello, Mr. M4. He fired once at me, I managed to get three shots at him, two of which actually did damage, so I think I came off the better than that. Uh, and he's going to try and come around. He bounces a shot. I put another shot into him, so... Keep a track of the score between me and the M4 here. He's fired two shots and done nothing. I have fired four shots and damaged him three times. 
for around 50 damage each. So, there's the Hetzer again. Can I get him? No. I don't think that's one. And our artillery just blasted him, so I will be back to get the Hetzer. Uh, the Ram 2 is going after the M4, so I'm going to as well. I'm going to go down the hill, because I'm going to be much faster that way. Let's pull this one. Unfortunately, it is not good. He's just died. Uh, but I will avenge him by killing the M4. Then, see, things aren't going so well back. So I turn around to head back that way. I'm also very alone here now. Yeah, M3 lead just showed up behind me. And there's a full health tier 4s versus one full health. You know? And I start putting shot after shot into the M3 lead instead. But it's not enough. And I die. So. However, I did some significant damage to two of them. And neither of them are going to survive for very long. I would like to say, anyways. I know how this game plays out. They do die. We do win. I have the results. And basically, um, just takes these Hetzers here a little while to catch up. And the Sparta 38T. Props to 38T. This guy did phenomenally well for this fight. And I, I'll highlight him as well in the after battle. He was just fantastic. Especially in a tank that has no. I mean, I know it's really good uh, as a tank. And, um, well, the gun is really good. The The machine itself is mobile enough, but has no armor. Which, um, the less armor you have, the less well, you see, you, in my opinion, you can handle a higher tier battle. Um, but that is, again, just my opinion. Which, you know, will vary from person to person and may or may not be correct. All that's left is artillery. I think you know where this is going. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the results. Alright, so here we are. Victory. All enemy vehicles destroyed. That pretty much sums it up. First class mastery badge and fire for effect. And boy did I fire for effect. Quite a lot of damage done here. So yeah, there I am. 1,093, 93, 98 damage done. 3 kills, 843 experience. And that Martyr 38T. 1,100 damage. 1,156. 2 kills, 829 damage. Oh man, he was just, oh he was rocking. He was rocking. And uh how'd I do? Twenty six shots fired, twenty two hit, twenty one penetrated, so one shot bounces. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. Uh you can see the, the general stats for the tank over here. If you are so inclined. Um all of it was at burling distances because you can get in their base. Um uh, damage block by armor five hundred. Even in a tier five game the dam the armor is still quite functional. Any vehicle spotted? One. That's not very important. Experience and credits earned. Credits, 26,893. I left with 24,110. I made 1,264 experience times two for the first victory of the day for 25,28. Not bad at all. So, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, have a good one.